have a little work to take care of. Look, Pop, there's a parrot like Captain Jonas has. Let's say hello to it. Ahoy, mate. Stand by to repel boarders. Not very talkative, is he? I guess nobody ever tried to teach him. Well, I haven't got any time to spend on his education. Like I said, I have a little business to tend to. How long will you be, Pa? Well, son, it could take all afternoon. You think you'll be able to find a way to pass the time? I'm going to go say goodbye to Captain Jonas. Be sure and stay out of trouble. I will. All right, stay out of trouble. Did you hear that, Pa? Sounds like pretty good advice to me. Stay out of trouble. Stay out of trouble. Stay out of trouble. Stay out of trouble. Papers seem to be in order, Mr. Boone. Guard, take these upstairs, please.
shooting I've heard in my day. And many's the nine-pounder I've touched off from the deck of the unicorn here. <laughs> Ahoy, unicorn! Ah! I remember this French privateer closing in on us just off the Bahamas. Carrying twice our sail and twice our guns she was. I don't mean that kind of shooting, Captain Jonas. Well, sir, the very first broadside from the unicorn, and we parted that Frenchie's mainmast neat as the hair on a parson's wig. I mean, they're shooting out there in the street right now. And all the soldiers running and everything. Lower your anchor, laddie, and take it slow. Honest, Captain Jonas. They were chasing this man, and he was carrying a box. <gasps> Commodore is coming! I guess he wants to see what's going on. Now, Commodore! Ho, ho! I'm coming under full sail, too. <laughs> Looks like a storm's brewing. We had him cornered, sir, when he ran in here, but he sort of disappeared. With the dispatch box, of course. Well, I'm not too sure about that. I remember when we were chasing him, I kept hearing those sleigh bells, and all of a sudden they stopped. So it's possible he might have hidden the box somewhere. But you're not too sure about that either. No, sir. Well, there's one thing you can be sure about. Unless that thief is locked in the guardhouse by this time tomorrow, a certain ex-corporal will be put there in his place. Can you tell me who that ex-corporal would be? Corporal? Yes, sir. Me, sir. Well, I must say your fund of factual knowledge is increasing. <laughs> <laughs> corporal, I'm sure these good people have business of their own to occupy their valuable time. Yes, sir. All right, you heard the Commodore. Now move along. To your homes. I suggest you search the stable area. When you're done, leave a watch here. That thief may return to look for that box himself, in the likely event that you fail to uncover it. Lieutenant. All right, Knights. I saw him throw it in there, just before they chased him away. Blow me down. Pipe down. Good night. It was heavy, say you. Made a very big splash. It must have been awful important the way they were chasing him. Aye, lad, I expect it is. I better go tell the Commodore. Please lay that talk, mate. Don't go stirring up any whirlpools. I know the ways of the British Navy, and you don't. But a thief's a thief. And the British are the British. Like it's not that scurvy dog's doing his favor. There might be secret papers in that box. And if there are, it's my judgment they're better off in our hands than the British. You don't love the British, do you? The king quartering soldiers on the people, hanging poor lads from the yard arm. And your pod say the same thing. I gotta get me hook on that box. Just one hitch. How are you going to get that box away from all those soldiers? You leave that old Jonas. You're not alone now, lad. You got yourself a shipmate. Give me that jug. <laughs> We're going to disguise that box as a keg of rum. It's a waste of good rum, but we wouldn't want them doubting our words now, would we? All right, laddie. <laughs> Let's lay a course for that well. You two, move off now, and I'll not be telling you a second time. Well, now, what's things coming to? Will a servant of the king will deny a poor lad a ladle of water? 
rum has been eating drink to me these 40 years. What a poor parched innocent boy. All right, take a drink and then go. Careful, lad. The corporal wouldn't like it if you was to chance to topple in. No, see what you made me do. That was a full cat's rum. Wasn't very big. A noggin hogs had rum drum. And it's not for wasting. Now into that bucket with you and fetch it. I yell pay the score. Yes, sir. going on here? Clumsy lad dipped a full cask of rum into the well. I'll be hanged by me thumbs if I'll see good waste. You'll be hung by your neck if you don't get him up here in just one second. Oh, I'm sorry, Corp. You're interfering with the king's business here. Hold it! King's business? What kind of business? None of yours. Now up with that bucket or you're going to the guardhouse, the both of you. He's ah, heavy as an anchor, I can't budge it. God help me with this bucket. Make a sailor, laddie. When I had both my hands, I could hoist a schooner's main, sir, by myself and never draw a hard breath. <laughs> Give me that. Oh, time you got back up here. What took you so long? Ah. Whoa! Oh, oh, thank you kindly, Corporal, and good luck to you in the king's business, whatever it is. Look at you. Scummy as a bilge rat. Store. Oh, that must be gold from the hoist of it. Come on. Take the bloom and pack England herself to tally it up. <laughs> there ought to be a big reward. Reward? Have you gone daft, lad? We turn this over to the Commodore. He'll clap us both in irons as accessories to the crime. I say it's the king's gold and the king shan't have it. Pa wouldn't agree to that. Not money. But he's your pa, not mine. Ah, now, laddie. If you knew the way I suffered at the hands of the king's navy. Suffered. And the poor people of this town. We're just seeing that the British get back a little of what they give. And we're rich, laddie. Rich as lords rolling in a coach. With rum and tobacco for the rest of our lives. You. you keep a sharp lookout while I take this in the back and open the lock. Aye, aye, Captain. Captain Jonas, it's a man with a scar. He's back. Well, stay out of sight. It's a pity we didn't leave it at the bottom of the well for him to find. Just some iron and brass. Not even secret papers. 
Why would he want to steal a box for... And why would the Commodore want it back so bad? Uh, have the wind to be there, lad. Another thing I can't fathom. Why'd Scarface out there risk sailing across the Commodore's bow just to get it? We'll swear an oath, lad. An oath? Of silence. You and me are the only two who know what happened to that box, ain't we? And we know what the British will do if they find out, don't we? Drawn and quartered, sure as you're born and strung up to the highest yard arm. We don't want that to happen, do we? What are we going to swear on? The unicorn. ship the unicorn. Honest and true to me she was. You'll not find a better thing to swear on. I swear to keep mum on what we did today and never to tell the name of my shipmate or may I boil an oil. Swear. I swear. Share and share alike. And so we shall. I'll keep these bits of metal and the box will come in handy for you when you're back in Boonesville for your lunches. Just fits. You mean it's for me? Now go on away, present, so you'll not forget old Captain Jonas. Now you best hoist your jibs and set a course away from me. And look out for Scarface, you come athwart his course. It'll be your last voyage. Remember we're shipmates, and remember what we swore. You can count on me. Mum's the word. Fair winds, lad. Bye. Fair winds. <laughs> Beauty, Israel. Just the thing for the mantle of the new room your father's promised to build you. Your clothes are dry by now. You better get dressed. Why, Ma? Just have to take them off again when I go to bed. Suppose I said, why bother to tidy the beds every day? They're just going to get mussed again when we go to sleep. Why do you bother, Ma? Because we're a neat and civilized family. Yes, ma'am. Now, you better get dressed. I think I hear your father coming. Oh, you're back early. Mm, all finished. If we can leave in the morning, I have plenty. Oh, wonderful. Where's this one? Changing his clothes. I had to wash every stitch of his clothes. I don't know what we do for excitement without that boy. Well, we had plenty of excitement down at the government house today. I was there when some fella stole a dispatch case right out from under the nose of Commodore Morrison. What happened to him? Well, I don't know. The last time I saw him, he was heading for the hill. Six or seven soldiers after him. Where'd this come from? Is real brother. Is something wrong? Well, I don't know. This is an official dispatch case like the one all the ruckus was about this afternoon. How'd you come by this, son? Oh, uh, I found it. Bottom of a well. King Seal. Did anyone see you with this? N no, Pa. I was down there all alone. Israel, put your coat on. We're going to pay a visit to Commodore Morrison. This may be the box they're looking for, and if it is, the sooner it's returned, the better. Can't we just throw it away or something? Nothing's in it. Israel, this is the king's property. A man could be hung just for breaking the seal. What does it matter? It belongs to the British. The truth matters, Israel. And possibly keeping innocent people from becoming involved. We'll be back soon. Don't be late for supper. I don't think I'm going to be very hungry. And after accidentally falling into this well, the location of which escapes you, you stumbled across this empty box. And you've no idea how it got down there in the first place. 
And then you picked up the box and you climbed back out all by yourself. Hmm? Quite a feat for a boy of your size to climb out of a well alone and unaided, uh, carrying this heavy dispatch box in the bargain. Don't you think? I asked you a question, boy. My son is not a liar, Commodore. And I won't have him badgered in this way. Now, you have your box back. I think we'll just be leaving now. I must ask you to wait, Mr. Boone. I'm not finished yet with the boy or with you. Corporal. Is that the boy, Corporal? Yes, sir. And is that the man? No, sir, he was an older man of medium build. Hmm. Perhaps you can enlighten us as to the identity of this older man of medium build. Israel, if you have any idea of what he's talking about, tell the Commodore. Cat's got your tongue, eh, boy? I suggest we refresh this young man's memory as to the location of the well wherein he found this box. Perhaps when you're at the scene, you'll be stimulated to recall the details of your story. Follow me, Mr. Boone. Corporal, bring that box. I submit that you did not fall into this well. You were lured in by an accomplice, this older man of medium build. I want his name. Tell him, son. Like as not, he's in league with the man who stole the box in the first place. Don't you see the man was just using you to retrieve that box? Whoever he is, he'll swing. Very well. I've tried to be patient with you. Corporal, put the boy under arrest as an accessory to the crime. Now, hold on, Corporal. He's just a little boy. You can see that. And I'm sure if he knows who the man is, he'll tell you. But right now, you've got him so scared he can't talk. Now, let me reason with him for a little while, and I promise you, you'll have all the information you want. I gave you an order, Corporal. Put Mr. Boone under restraint. That will be enough, Mr. Boone. You let my go, Parker! All right, you go over here. Take your hands off of him, Corporal. You come back here! Corporal, let him go. As long as we have Boone, the boy won't go far. Put him in irons. All right, Mr. Boone, let's move. And no more tricks. Jonas, it was all my fault. I started it. I swore not to tell. Now they've got Pa. I'm sure your father will be all right, Israel. He's probably worrying about you right now. Son, now pay attention. This box that all the fuss is about, were you actually there with Captain Jonas when he first opened the lock? No. I was out front. Keeping an eye on the man with a scar. But honest, Ma, it was filled with nothing but junk. 
I know that's all that was in it when Captain Jonas showed it to you. But I'm sure that Commodore Morrison is not the kind of man to keep locked boxes of scrap metal in his desk. Israel. Dear, I'm afraid your Captain Jonas has used you. <sighs> that box probably was full of gold, just as you thought. And your sea captain is probably packing up right now, getting ready to make away with it. No! Captain Jonas wouldn't do anything like that. He just wouldn't. We're sworn shipmates. Israel. Loyalty's a fine thing. And if you're right, there's no harm in telling the whole truth to Commodore Morrison. Israel, your father's in this very deep. We all are. Suppose you're wrong about Captain Jonas. Do you want to see him run away with all that gold and leave your father to pay the piper? No, ma'am. I'm going to tell Commodore the whole truth about the dispatch case, just the way you told it to me. I want you to stay right here, right in this room until I get back. Yes, ma'am. You're to lock the door and open it to no one but me, under any circumstance. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. Oh, there's bread and honey in the cupboard. It'll tide you over till I get back. Israel, lock this door. Rebecca Boone, and I'd like to see Commodore Morrison. The Commodore's at dinner, madam. You'll tell him it's very important, and I'd like to see him. I'm sorry, ma'am, but the Commodore gets very annoyed if his dinner is disturbed. At once. You may wait in his office if you wish. Now you see here, Corporal. You've got my husband here and my child half frightened to death. I'm not going to sit in that office and cool my heels while your Commodore sips his after-dinner port. Now, you go tell him wherever he is that Mrs. Boone is here and she has all the information he wants about his precious box. Now, you tell him if he wants to catch his thief, he better get here and in a hurry. Yes, ma'am. Captain Jonas! Captain Jonas! It's me! The man with the scar is chasing me! Chasing you? 
Wouldn't you be safer off at home, lad? I don't think so. You're a real shipmate. I was there at the well when they put the screws on you. Ah, but you didn't drag me into this mess, and it gives old Jonas a chance to haul anchor while there's still a breeze. My ma was right. I was out there. You took the gold for yourself. Then you filled the box with his junk. And now you're taking off with the gold and leaving me and my pa to pay the piper. You're all of a clove hitch, lad. I'd sooner lose me other hand than cross a ship, mate. Look here. Look. Where's the gold? Where's the gold? Only me does. Huh. Then why are you packing to leave? Well, I'm a proper shame to tell you why. But it's nothing to do with the box. The Commodore's mighty anxious to get his hooks on me. And I've no mind to spend the rest of me days in some pest-ridden prison, waiting for a glory day at the end of a rope at the top of the Commodore's yard arm. That's the plain truth. You can call me a coward if you like. I never cross a ship, mate. A spade's a spade. Oh, shut your trap. Good night. I don't care about the gold, Captain Jonas. You can have it, all of it. It's just that they've got my paw. And you're the only one that can convince the Commodore that he's had nothing to do with it. Please, Captain Jonas. It means an awful lot to me. Would you please go to the Commodore and tell him the truth? Please. I'd sooner sail up to execution dock, lad. But I'll do it. Only you gotta believe I didn't take that gold. Let's hurry. I've come for the gold. Till I have it, neither you nor the boy will leave this room alive. And that's the whole story, Commodore. Either that box was filled with those pieces of iron, or this Captain Jonas has your gold. Hmm. Corporal? Corporal? Yes, sir. Fetch the prisoner, Boone. Yes, sir. You see, Mrs. Boone, you've told me everything except where I may find your boy. And I won't tell you that. I can only assure you that my boy and my husband are innocent of any willful wrong against the Crown. Hmm. The jigsaw fits together very neatly, Miss Boone. Except for one small piece. I gave your boy every opportunity to tell me the same story you've just given me. Why do you suppose he chose to lie to me? Well, I don't understand that myself. Unless it's some kind of childlike loyalty to Captain Jonas. Sworn shipmates, I believe, is the way he put it. Being a naval man, Mrs. Boone, I can understand it. In fact, I understand a great deal from what you've told me. Sworn shipmates. I'm afraid I have some rather bad news for you, Mrs. Boone. If your son had only told me the whole truth from the beginning, things might have been different. As it is, we are faced with a very serious situation. Becky. Dan. Is this all safe? Safe. Unchain him, Corporal. And be quick about it. I owe you an apology, Mr. Boone, but I'm afraid there's no time now. Your son's life may be in danger. I just left him. Whatever you haven't hidden, Mrs. Boone, you best tell me. Quickly. If this is some kind of trick. I assure you it is not. That box your boy found was indeed filled with worthless metal scraps. It was a ruse planted in my desk to trap a scar-faced Portuguese who'd been stealing official secrets from this office. Well, then why did you want to detain our boy? A minnow to catch a shark, Mr. Boone. And you say our son's life is in danger? That Portuguese believes the box he stole was filled with gold. By now, all Phoebus must know it was your boy who found it. Wherever your son is, Mrs. Boone, that Portuguese is not far away. Now, please, tell me where he is. You better tell him, Becky. I'll take you there. Monsieur, my patience is wearing thin. 
I've told you all I know. The box was empty. No, it wasn't empty. It was full. But there was nothing in it. But... Ah! Ah! Stop! Ah! I'm telling you the truth! Oh! Ah! Yard! I've had enough of this. Now, if it is a game you wish to play, we will play it together. Now, there is him, and there is you. And there is me, and there is the gold. It is the two of you against me and the gold. If the gold is not in the game by the time the glass runs out, the boy will die. There's less than five minutes left in that glass. Then in less than five minutes, there would be only you and me to finish the game. Pedro! Pedro! He could have made it. If I were a lad in trouble and had a sworn shipmate nearby, that's where I'd go. Captain Jonas. Wait. I lied to you. I've got the gold. An interesting game and very well played, monsieur. So you did have the gold after all, eh? Greed got the best of me, boy. I hid the gold in the old boot and then I buried it after you left. Can you find it in your heart to forgive an old pirate? Just leave me alone. Swearing to be shipmates. And all this time you were double-crossing me. Now my pa will rot in prison so you can roll in your coach. Oh, boy. Just leave me alone. Don't even talk to me. I hate you, you scurvy dog. We are wasting time. The buried gold, monsieur. I'll take you to it on one condition. The boy goes free. So you can run for the soldiers? <laughs> this is a game for men, not children. You heard the bargain. The boy goes free first. I don't need your help. You can do what you want with me. Anything. Him too for all I care. Scurvy dogs, both of you. I hope you get what you deserve. Help! Somebody help! There you go! Open up in there. Maybe there's a back door. Captain Jonas? Are you in there? Nobody's here. Let's go. Anything? Nothing. Corporal, assemble the garrison. Every man jack, on duty or off. I want them all in front of Government House in ten minutes. Yes, sir. You saddle up two horses on the double. Give the game away. And now, monsieur, the gold. The boy goes free or I don't watch. I am to the best. If you cross me, I will come back and douse his light. Be 
your own good lad. I won't be seeing you again. It's old Jonas' last voyage. Forty year before the mast, with gales blowing in my ear, and hard tack rumbling in my gut. And I'm to end my days like the old unicorn herself, with nothing but a rusty old anchor to mark her bones. You have done enough talking. Die, sweet. Ah, good morning. <laughs> Sit up, get moving. <laughs> yeah. You gotta have a shovel to dig a treasure. Or a grave, monsieur. You're to ride to the toll gate on the post road, you to the bridgehead at the river. And remember, a scar-faced man and a fair-haired boy of ten. Make haste. Corporal, you take a squad of men to the docks. Now, you've seen the boy and the Portuguese. Comb every building, look in every culvert under the pier everywhere. And report back here to me every half hour. Carry on. Squad one, fall out and follow me. Now, the rest of you, house to house, street by street. I want no stone left unturned. Carry on. A lieutenant, station one man at the wayside tavern, just in case the boy returns on his own. Ah, uh, Mr. Boone, would you take these two men and search the general area of the livery stable? Keep a sharp eye. The man may be in need of a horse. Yes. Mr. Boone, you'd best remain here with me. Jonas had the gold all the time. 
He's down with the Scarface man to dig it up. Did this take where? No, but the Scarface man said if he didn't get the gold, he'd be back to douse my light. Son, there never was any gold in that box. Just scrap metal. It was a trap for the man with the scar on his face. But Captain Jonas swore that he, he had the gold in the boot and bear... Crime and Antley. He did it to save me. Now that man with the scar will kill him. If only we knew where they went. Ahoy, unicorn! Hoist anchor! That's it, Pa! The unicorn! That's what he was trying to tell me when he was tying me up. He said he'd end up like the unicorn with only a godforsaken anchor to mark her bones. Israel. Honest, Ma, that's what he said. The exact words. I know where the unicorn lies. I know exactly where. You two stay here. He may be back to the boy. Abraham Soaks Punt. The tide must have shifted the sand. Row. I was right beside the fluke of this anchor. Keep digging. Hurry, Pa! Faster! That's as far as I go. I'm sick and I'm tired and I reached the end of my string. There's no gold in there, wasn't he? Go ahead and shoot. And remember this. If any harm comes to that boy back there, I swear I'll come back from my grave and I'll see the color of your insides. If you have nothing more to say, Monsieur. Show? Blast your shroom! No! Drop that gun. That's what I meant, Mrs. Boone, about shipmates. Not scrap metal this time. <clears throat> His Majesty's government is pleased to reward you for the return of this box and for your heroic part in the apprehension of a traitor to the crown. How is this to be divided? Share and share alike. We're shipmates. <laughs> Crime and Antley! It's a bloomin' fortune! Israel, what do you say? I say we're rich as lords, rolling in a coach, with enough for rum and tobacco for the rest of our days! It's a good thing we're going back to Boonesboro. Not a minute too soon. <laughs>